Last year saw the return of Zapcat Racing to the River Tyne after a break of seven years. And this unique brand of free-to-view action proved so popular that the city of Newcastle has once again been selected to host this Grand Prix series. The racing split into two categories, heavyweights and lightweights. Let's hear from some of the competitors. As you can see, the sun is out, the boats are out, the course is laid. There's going to be some tight racing this weekend. It's getting close to the end of the season now, the points are tight, so uh, it's going to be a very interesting race day. It's quite important one for us, really. We've got, uh, I think we're pretty much about joint level in first position, so uh, yeah, we've just done everything we possibly can to try and get the boat kept off position. It's a really brilliant venue. Um, the flat water suits us because we're a light boat. Um, but we really enjoyed it last year, so we're looking forward to a good weekend, hopefully. We're uh, contending for the British Championship. I think we're in second at the moment. A um, lot to play for. It was a brilliant out venue last year, really enjoyed it, so yeah, looking forward to get back in the water again. My co pilot's uh, partner's just had a baby. He's at home looking after her instead of racing with me. One of the other Marines will jump in with me. Once they finish in their race, they'll jump into my boat and help out with me and act as my co pilot. Top three would be nice, but last weekend we didn't do very well at all, so not to come last would be a bonus. We're lying second, got to do well in every heat, got to get the points up. We won it last year, we've got to get back on track to do the same again this year. It could be fun to say the least, stressful. <laughs> but enjoy it, rather than something that. This is our first season at Zapcat Racing. We won the last round of the British. So, uh, yeah, hopefully everything will go okay this weekend. We got a new engine, we were just so sick of being let down all the time. Confident. Yeah. Mm. It's unusual for the competitors. We're used to racing in big surf out at sea, um, rough conditions. Here it's flat, so it's a bit more technical. Makes them think a little bit more, but they um, they enjoy it. It's one of the favourite venues, especially being in the middle of a city. Quite unusual to go power boating in the middle of a city at these sorts of speeds. I think that about sums it up, guys. Lightweights, if you'd like to prep, get ready for the we'll get you wet. We're all set then for the first final of the weekend. It's the lightweights, the ZCR50s. When the green flag drops, we're away. And it looks like a good start for outfit number 12. Patrick Moger and Glenn Huxter were on board with Darren Ford and Kelly Allen. But it looks like Ford and Allen pushing into first ahead of the reigning champions, Steve and Bobby Pidsley. That's how it acts out. Back on board with the Ford and Allen combination again. This is the view from their craft, clear water up ahead, everyone else in hot pursuit. Kelly leaning over to the left as they go around the first set of markers. Head down, trying to get as streamlined as possible. Pulling away. In second place is last year's champion Steve and Bobby Pidsley. Patrick Mosier is the oldest pilot out there. Alongside him is Glenn Hooks as we go back on board with Ford and Allen, still dominating things out in front. There is Mosier and Huckster. Ford and Kelly Allen still setting the pace, a ferocious one at that. No one can catch them at present. The Royal Marines craft of Peter Apps and Damien Beveridge in number 40. Here come the rookies, Gary Simmons and Alex Pidsley. Back with the race leaders, they're coming up to take the chequered flag. A fairly straightforward race win for Darren Ford and Kelly Allen with Steve and Bobby Pidsley having to settle the second ahead of Peter Apps and Damien Beveridge. Delight then for Darren Ford and Kelly Allen. 
It's the turn of the heavyweights to take to the tyne in the NE1 Newcastle Zabcat Grand Prix. Away we go, it looks like a good start by Chris Mead and Adam Hewlett in Craft 25. On board with Matt Batten and Mark Bruce, the number 52 outfit. The charge of the heavyweights, there's some bashing going on in the background. David and Ashley, Finlayson lead. They have a new engine this weekend, having suffered problems with the last one. That's who we're on board with now. Twenty-five, Chris Speed and Adam Hewlett in a tussle with fourteen, Stephen Cox and Damian Beveridge. Here's the Finlaysons who continue to lead the father and daughter team from Scotland. They came here to watch this Grand Prix last year, were so impressed that they decided to take part, and here they are leading it. The three-way fight for fourth is still raging on, in fact it's a four-way fight. Lovely four, Andrew Foster and Jason Peacock. David and Ashley Finlayson as they continue to lead this final, the first final of the weekend. There's another one to come tomorrow. Looks like the race leaders taking their pit lap. Every crew has to do this once in the race. So off they go. Here comes Stephen Cox and Damien Beveridge in boat 14. Will they rejoin ahead of these two crews? They've certainly got straight line speed. Certainly got past one crew. Meanwhile, we're back with the Finlaysons. They're going to rejoin shortly. Well, they're all settling out there at the moment, or sorting themselves out after their pit laps. The first of the flag is David and Ashley Finlayson. New engine coming up trumps for David and Ashley Finlayson as they finish ahead of Andrew Foster and Jason Peacock, who have to settle for second place. That's day one of competition completed. The second and final day is to come. And the forecast weather-wise for the NE1 Grand Prix at Newcastle is more of the same. We spent a lot of time last weekend testing different uh, prop guards and different heights and trim on the engine, four flat cam, so it certainly paid off yesterday. It's a different course we're running today, it's going to be shorter, it's got to be a short pit lap, and uh, I think there'll be a bit of contact to tell the truth today. We've lowered the amount of air we put into the boat, it's now at six, it was at seven yesterday, we think that should help us quite a lot. Hopefully now we should be able to um, get more grip when we're going around. We had some problems first thing in the morning with the engine, which we stripped down and the pit got out there. And uh, the engine did miss a beat all day. Fantastic. It was uh, important points for us to try and gather, which was good, but it was a really good day's racing. The weather was great, the crowds were great. It's a brilliant location here. We really enjoyed it. We're all set then for day two of the NE1 Zapcat Grand Prix on the River Tyne. Here we go with the ZCR50 crews, these are the lightweights, as we wait for the green flag to go. Riding with Darren Ford and Kelly Allen, yesterday's winners. Darren Ford and Kelly Allen in 38, closest to the camera, but it looks as if they're in second as they approach the turn. Whoa, that's how close they are, they had to hold off. have cost Ford and Allen a little bit of momentum. Leaders going through. All getting a bit out of control at the back there. So it's Steve and Bobby Pidgeley this time, followed by Darren Ford and Kelly Allen in the battle for the lead. Roles are reversed this time. Yesterday the Pidgeleys were second to Ford and Allen. This time it's the other way around. Zapcats normally raced at sea, it's rare for them to be raced on a river, therefore conditions fairly smooth to what they're normally used to. The 
Pisley still leading. Last year's champions, of course, were back on board with Ford and Allen looking at the third position in the distance. The difficulty for Ford and Allen is being in the wash and unable to see where they're going. And their other problem is moving out and then having to deal with the waves moving out in the wake. Bobby Bisley looking back to see where Ford and Allen are as the white flag goes up. It's a thrilling duel that looks like going all the way to the wire. Here come Ford and Allen up the inside. Riding with Ford and Allen yet again. They're coming up to the chequered flag. It's going to be the Pisleys that do it though. Ford and Allen will have to settle for second place this time. There they go, Steve and Bobby Pisley, joy for them. They take the chequered flag. But this time it's the defending champion, Steve and Bobby Pisley, who come out on top, reversing yesterday's positions with Darren Ford and Kelly Allen second this time. Fantastic. Long, long weekend. Been coming second all weekend long. Finally found four foot on the final. Got where I wanted to be, took position, won it. Superb result, love the place. We're ready for the last piece of action from the NE1 Grand Prix at Newcastle on the River Tyne, waiting for the green flag to drop. It's the mad dash to the first turn. Riding with Paul and Ed Holt, brothers who are both Royal Marines. They look to be mid-pack at present. David and Ashley Finlayson looking to be sneaking up on the inside, are they? and should go around turn one in first place. Here they go. Again, having won yesterday, the father and daughter team from Scotland, who weren't even competing in this series last year. They were stood on the side of the time watching. And here they are leading in the any one Grand Prix. We were just on board there with Chris Smead and Adam Hewlett. Andrew Foster and Jason Peacock were just to the left of them. The Holt brothers on the inside of both crews. There certainly did look to be contact, and I would say Smead and Hewlett in number 25 have come off the worst. All the while, the Finlaysons with their new engine power are away at the front. They were fancy to do well this weekend, and that looks to be the case following a poor start to the campaign due to a few gremlins. That's behind them now, so too are the rest of the field. It's all very close between number 37, the Holtz, and Smead and Hewlett again. And the arm in the air would suggest that they came into contact again. While everyone else is seemingly squabbling away behind, father and daughter David and Ashley Finlayson are cruising to victory. Paul and Ed Holtz's momentum has certainly slowed. White flag greets the Finlaysons, who look like they're going to make it two wins out of two in the heavyweights finals. Paul and Ed Holt, the Royal Marines, playing catch-up. That's who we're on board with right now. The cross of St Andrew, somewhat appropriately, next to the chequered flag on the craft of David and Ashley Finlayson. Looks like going to be the next flag they're going to see, the black and white one. And that's who we're riding with. Here they come to take the chequered flag. Second place will go to Andrew Foster and Jason Peacock, but it's a double for the Finlaysons. Ball and Ed Holt pass the chequered flag in third place behind Foster and Peacock. The top crew this weekend undoubtedly is Ashley and David Finlayson. Everyone just went as we expected it, uh, absolutely delighted. I hoped, not expected. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, aye, the training paid off. You're so close to members of the public, the spectators are so close to you, and you hear them and you see cameras flashing when you're going around the circuit, and people are cheering you on. It's just a great feeling, it's great coming to Newcastle and doing this. In the overall standings, it's all square at the top of the lightweight championship. 
While in the heavyweight category, it's still advantage to the Royal Marine crew of Paul and Ed Holt. That wraps up the NE1 Grand Prix of Newcastle on the River Tyne.